Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of the installing of defect detectors by Searchlight Simulations. I'm Anthony Wood and I'll be walking you through this in real time. So this is actually pretty easy. What you'll want to do is in the root editor of whatever route you choose, so in this case I took Mariah's Pass because I have a timetable available to me, I uh, scroll down the list to Searchlight Simulations and select the common asset. In the common asset, you'll find a one link, two link, three link, and four link version of the equipment defect detector. This allows you to apply the defect detector on more than two main track, single track, three, three main track, and four main track. So in this case, we've got two main tracks here, so I'll be using the two link defect detector. Simply place it down wherever you want it and apply the links in order. So in this case, in every railroad, the first main track is always the one to the north. So you put the first link on the first main track to the north. So use the compass, it helps a lot. Place that link, and it'll stubbornly select the second link. There you go. Place that down, and then here comes the fun part. These detectors are fully configurable for whatever railroad you're going to be setting up, um, with limitations for now. So the railroads that we can program this thing to read out are BNSF, Canadian Pacific, Norfolk Southern, KCS, CSX, Illinois Central, Burlington Northern, Union Pacific, and Adriana County per request. To name the detector, you will double click it, just like any other signal, and type in the name of the railroad that you want. Now this will be included in a de detector ID text file, so you won't have to guess at what it is. So in this case, it's just BNSF. And then naming the milepost that you want it to read out per a timetable. Excuse me. Since we are at Columbia Falls, let me find the appropriate detector here. Columbia Falls per my timetable here. That 1211.7, and the nearest detector to that is 1212.9. 12, you can verify the position of these defect detectors by just going to the map. Here's 1213, so this would be 1212.9 right in the middle. So we will put in the milepost as this 1212.9. Put an X in to fill a variable because you can put up to seven digits and an N so it doesn't end the uh, transmission with an X or whatever. This, If you don't put this in right, it will only read out the road name and then it'll just remain on the rest of the time. So we want to verify that we have seven digits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, I can replace that X with an N. Excuse me. See, I'm not perfect at this, at this either. It'll take some time to get used to, but we'll have some good demonstrations of how it works in the manual. The second field, which is this one on the right, we'll want to designate what the detector says. Now this is up to you, but it also is up to the prototype. So every detector is a little bit different, so we made it as configurable as possible. Most BNSF detectors will report main track instead of yeah, it'll report main and then the track number, but some will also report track instead of and then the track number versus instead of, instead of main. So we'll put M, and then we'll have no direction indication. So we'll put X. We will not have a speed report valid. So we'll put another X, followed by a T, and then the last two values are for if it reports the car count. And if it reports the train length, it will put two X's there. That is the naming of the signal, and it's really easy to do. Um, you'll want to kind of realign everything later on, and it sh shouldn't mess with anything too much. So you kind of want to drag the nodes to be where you want them, uh, kind of in line, and then reposition the, the uh, detector box to be wherever you want it. So I'll just kind of straighten it out. Create it. that's all placed. Now the secondary part of it is purely for aesthetic, but you want to scroll down in the signal category here, and you'll find a piece called Equipment Defect Detector. 
And this will include your dragging equipment and hotbox detector sensors, as well as your axle counters. And you can place these in the track. Now, it might not fit perfectly, and this is mostly down to track geometry. Um, not everybody makes track to the correct profile and it's especially a curse with the dovetail track i think they make like 85 pound rail and these detectors are meant to fit on a minimum of 136 pound rail so when you try to put it on this stuff it doesn't look great now doing a track swap with something like the g-tracks or scale rails it'll actually be accurate and it should fit quite well but this is this is totally up to you you want to fit it to the track as best as you can it will clip um it's it's not that big of a deal it's just this is purely for aesthetic it doesn't serve a functional purpose in the defect detector but it gives you a visual feedback oh hey yeah i'm passing over your defect detector um adjust it however you see fit i'm just gonna try to get it to conform to the crack mesh without clipping too much um the the spacing for these end plates that are supposed to sit on top of other ties is supposed to be the correct 19 and a half inches center over center for ties Unfortunately, I don't think anybody has done, well, I haven't tried it with scale rails yet, but I don't think, I think very few people have actually made the correct um, geometry for the ties. They're all spaced too closely. Um, we, we made this with the correct dimensions in mind based on the ARIMA charts for track geometry as well as you know the placement of the real things per photograph. So, as with anything else in this game, it's kind of a compromise. Uh, nothing we can do. But yeah, you get this fitted in about where you want it. I just pull this back. Adjust it a little bit. Get it to show a little bit more detail. And that really should be it. Now, if you're doing this and you want to run it in immediately, you'll have to restart the game and then have a scenario and then with the aforementioned rolling stock updates any train that passes over it should work now um, I will note excuse my error there this is a faulty scenario everything should work just fine if you have any issues where the detector doesn't voice or doesn't voice a whole transmission and continues to just transmit with uh, radio static that means that the naming convention is wrong and you'll have to just verify that you have it named correctly I'm not going to get into testing this. You guys have seen the video on Facebook and YouTube. So enjoy. Hopefully you guys really uh, get a kick out of this and get some enjoyment out of it. It would be great to see some new routes coming out, freeware, that uh, utilize some new technology. Thanks for watching, guys.